Hey guys, what's up? Shane Wolf 38 here, and it has been a little while since my last upload, a little over a year now actually, but today I have a creation that I made about eight months ago, though never released, and that is a jukebox read and write data storage. Now, it's been known since early 1.14 that you can store a lot of data in a jukebox using its record item, but the first and actually only system I've seen of this on YouTube is by NopeName. Now, if you don't know who NopeName is, he has a lot of awesome command creations and an incredible Zelda adventure map series running on his YouTube channel. I highly encourage you to check him out, and I'll leave a link to his channel in the description down below. Now, in his system, he's able to read data from the jukebox using functions, but in order to write data into the system, he had to manually input the commands in chat. Now, the reason for this is that it's a lot trickier to put data into the system than it is to read it from the jukebox. But I have found a way to do it, and I'll be explaining how I'm reading and writing data later on in the video, but first I'm going to go ahead and showcase it. Now, this jukebox in front of me can hold 65,536 values, but this can easily be expanded all the way to the scoreboard limit and even beyond if you want to add some more commands. So currently there's no data at all in the jukebox, but we're going to go ahead and set some. Let's open up our menu here. Oh. And you can see we have parse, which just means to find data, to read data from the system. We're going to go ahead and do this, even though there's no data in it. We're just going to enter some random numbers. As you can see, we get a value of zero because there's no data set. 32. Okay, so let's go ahead and input some values. We're going to set the value we enter to 999. And we're going to index, which means we choose a location where we write the data. And we're going to put 43. Whoops. Hit enter, and you can see index 43 set to 999. If we go ahead and go to parse, we can enter some more random numbers. We're going to get zero, but let's go ahead and enter 43. And as you can see, we get our value of 999. Let's go ahead and set another value. We'll set it to 555, and we'll index this at position 80. We can go ahead and go to parse. We're going to hit 81. As you can see, we get a value of zero. We're going to hit 79. We get a value of zero, but as soon as we enter 80, we will get our value of 555. I'm just going to turn on send command feedback real quick so that I can show you what the inside of this data in the jukebox looks like. As you can see, we just have two entries. One has our value of 555 and one has our value of 999. Now, there is a lot you can do with a system like this. I've set up a few examples and I'm going to go into a different world to show you one of them right now. Okay, so the first example I have is if you were creating a game like Hangman. Now, every single round, you would need to generate a new word. Now, in these jukeboxes, you can actually store text in addition to values. So, for instance, you could store the name of an armor stand and then read that data into the name of an armor stand. So, all you would need to do is generate a random number for the position of the data you'd want to read, and then read whatever word was there. So I have a quick example set up. So let's go ahead and set the find score for storage, which is just the score that's set when you parse data. Let's go ahead and set this to four, and then we can read the data that's there. As you can see at, word, at position four, we get the word place. Let's go ahead and set this to seven, and we're gonna get the word pounce. Let's go ahead and set this to 10, and we will get the word zealous. So as you can see, we can easily create a whole dictionary using this jukebox and then read from it. Another example would be is if you were doing something like set things build game. So in this game, you enter words every time the player enters a word for someone else to build. And you can actually use the writing feature of the system to write those words into a storage. And then once you have all that stored, you can just use that for whatever repeating words, seeing how often a word comes up. There is just many, many options. So that would be the second example. Now I'm going to show you one other variation of this system that I have that you can use. All right, so here is another variation of the system that I just showed you. Now in the previous version, if you wanted to change how many values the system could hold, you had to go in and manually edit some of the numbers. It wasn't that hard, but it could get a little bit tedious. Now with this version, all you need to do is change how many jukeboxes are on top of the one that you see in front of me. Now you were probably wondering what those jukeboxes were for. That's how the writing system works, which I'll explain later. But in this version, if you were to add five jukeboxes on top of this, you would be able to hold four to the power of five values. That's why the other one has nine in total or eight on top of this, so it can hold four to the power of eight. So let's just go ahead and add a few jukeboxes. I'll add one. Whoops, oh my goodness. 
Okay. Two and then three. So this should be able to hold four to the power of three or 64 different values. We can go ahead and bring up our menu here. Whoops. And let's go ahead and enter some values. We're going to enter that. We'll put it in position uh, 34. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Now, if we go ahead and just, whoops, turn this on. And then we're going to get the data from this block. So data, get block, record item. And as you can see, our nest is only three deep, which is exactly what we want. That's four to the power of three. And then it has the value of 56. So this one's just a little bit easier to work with if you're creating multiple systems or testing anything out because you can easily change how much data it can hold. So with that said, let's get on to the explanation of how this actually works. Let's go ahead and start by explaining how the system reads data. So what you can see on your screen is the parse function. When we run the parse function, the first thing that happens is it sets the score var equal to the score of find. This is just a location in the jukebox where we want to read data from. And then we go ahead and set the counter score to zero. And then what we do is all the data is stored in the tag of store. And we copy that all to the tag of V. So now we just have a copy of all of our data. And then we go ahead and run the search function. So the search function is where we actually read the data from the system. Now what the first three commands here do is they take the score find and convert that into a base four representation of that number. So what we normally use is the decimal system, which is base 10. If we were to take the number 126, for example, that's equal to one times 100 plus two times 10 plus six times one. One is also equal to 10 to the power of zero. So that's how we would represent it in base 10. If we wanted to convert the number 57 into base four, this is the procedure that we'd use, which is what the commands do. So we take 57 mod four. What that operation does is it finds the remainder. If you divide 57 by four, that's equal to one. Then we divide 57 by four. Since Minecraft doesn't support decimals, this just rounds down to 14. It always rounds down. Then we take 14 mod four and we get the value of two. Then we take 14 and divide that by four and we get the value of three. We take three mod four and we get three, and then divide three by four, we get zero. And then we do it one more time. Zero mod four is just zero. And then we divide zero by four, which is of course zero. And then we would continue doing this process for however, um, however many values our system could hold. So if it could hold four to the power of eight, we'd have to run this eight times. That's what the counter at the bottom there is for. So let's go ahead and talk about these four commands in the middle. These middle commands use the base four representation to locate the data in the system. So with our base four representation of 57, the first digit is one. So that would correspond to path number one. Now what we have here is tag.v is the entire copy of our data. So what we do is we take path one from the copy and we replace the entire copy with it. So now paths zero, two, and three all get eliminated and we're only left with the contents of the first path of the copy. Now we continue this. So our next digit is the number two. So we would go to path two and this is actually path two of path one because of the way we're doing this. So we take path two and replace the entire copy with it. We do this again with the next digit, which is three. We go to path three, then the final digit with which is zero, and then we go to path zero. And then of course, if we're going all the way up to four to the power of eight, we would repeat this four more times, which would just be zero, 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 zero. And if this is a little unclear, cause it's kind of hard to explain, I have a visual representation, which I'll show real quick. So in this visual representation, we have three paths instead of four. That's just to make it less clustered and easier to see. Now let's imagine that we have the digit representation of three, one, two. Now the first operation, we take path three and replace all of the data with the contents of path three. Then we take path one and replace all of the data with the contents of path one. And then finally we take path two and replace all of the data with the contents of path two. And now we are left with position 20 and whatever data is there. Looking at the last few commands responsible for reading the data, we take the value that we found in the jukebox and transfer it to the score value. 
And then we also do a quick check with these four commands and see if we didn't reach the end of the paths, meaning that there wasn't any data there. Then we just set the value to zero. You can set it to a different value, but I just have it set to zero if no data is found. And that is the entire section for reading the data from the jukebox. Now to write data into the system, it seems like we should just reverse the process we use to read data from it. But this is a lot more difficult than it sounds. While it's really easy to narrow down the storage to find a specific piece of information, it's a lot harder to build it back up, so to speak. This is because essentially we'd have to enter in the numbers manually of the location as we're building it back up. Uh, it's kind of, it's hard to explain why this is difficult, but if you just think about it, you'll realize why. And that's where the multiple jukebox solution comes into play. So let's look at these commands here. The first one just copies the score of place into the score of var, and the second one runs the copy function. The copy function is executed one block above the main jukebox we use for data storage. The first three commands are identical to the ones we used for reading, where we just convert the number to a base four representation. The next command, it just clears the data inside the jukebox. That's because if there's no valid path to copy from, the data inside won't get overwritten, and that means we'll be copying the wrong data as the process continues, which we don't want. So then these next four commands, if we're on, let's say, digit number one in the four base representation, base four representation, then what we would do is we would go to the first path in the jukebox below and copy all of its data into the current jukebox. This process would just continue until we're left with a value. And I'm show a quick visual representation of that as well. Here we are at our three branch diagram again. Now, if we had the three digit representation 332 and we ran the copy function, it would first take the third branch of our initial tree and copy all of its contents into the second jukebox. Then we go to the third branch again in the second jukebox and copy all of its contents into the third jukebox. And then we go to the second branch in the third jukebox and copy all of its contents into the fourth jukebox, which is our final value. Once we've run the copy function, we take the jukebox at the top of the stack and set its value equal to the score val. This is the number that we want to input into the system, which can also be text or the name of an armor stand, for instance. Now we want to reverse the process to actually write this data into the system. So the first thing we do is set the score of constant to 16,384. This is also equal to 4 to the power of 7. If you remember, the system can hold 4 to the power of 8 or 65,536 different values. So we just set this value to 1 power lower. Then we copy the score of place into the score of var. This is just the index where we want to put our data into the system. And then we're going to run the function set all the way at the top. Well, not all the way at the top. One block below the top jukebox. The first four commands in the set function convert the number to a base four representation in the reverse of the method we were using before. So if we take our previously deconstructed 57, this can hold a maximum of four to the power of four values. So we're going to start using a value of four to the power of three for the constant. The first thing we do is 57 divided by four to the power of three, which gives us a value of zero, our first digit. Then take 57 mod four to the power of three, which is 57. Then take 57 divided by 4 to the power of 2, which is 3, our next digit. Then 57 mod 4 to the power of 2, which is 9. Then 9 divided by 4 to the power of 1, which is 2. And then 9 mod 4 to the power of 1, which is 1. And then finally, we just divide 1 by 4 to the power of 0, which is 1. And that gives us the reverse of the representation we had before if you compare the two. The next four commands do the exact reverse of the copy function. Now that we've changed the value at the end, we just bring that value back into the system. So if you look at the previous visual representation, we're just changing the value at 26 and then reversing that process exactly to bring it back into the system. And then this final command, it's just saying if the constant score is greater than zero, we repeat this process, which gets us down to the jukebox on the bottom, our main data storage. I hope you guys enjoyed that explanation. It's something new I'm trying. and It took me quite a while to do. Uh, please let me know down below in the comments if that was too much 
just the right amount or too little in terms of explanation so I can adjust for the future. I'm gonna be leaving a map download below. It's actually gonna be a zip file with three maps. The first one's gonna be the first one I showed you. The second is the second variation. And there's actually a third variation where all the values are set beforehand and that allows it to just run a little bit faster and use a few less commands. But uh, it involves this huge command in order to set the jukebox with all those values predefined. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's been a while and I'm glad to be back, at least for now. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.